G'day and welcome to the 26th video in our series of Jim Caronius' 100 uh, Integrals. And this is, as I said, his 26th integral in the series. Not very different from the one previous to it. It has uh, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. The one in the denominator has considerably higher order than the one in the numerator. And you notice it's already factorised and therein lies the hint. It's almost begging us to integrate using partial fractions. So we separate this into two fractions. So we're going to have one over something over x squared and something over 1 plus x squared dx. So let's just get that set up. So what numbers are we going to put here? Notice I didn't write the sign yet. Just don't know. Well, I notice that there's no x term in either of these. And we would traditionally put a polynomial of one order less here, ax plus b and cx plus d. But since there are no x's, I'm just going to put a constant. I'll, I'll call it a plus b. And let's see what we get. In order to have this denominator, the top and bottom here would be multiplied by 1 plus x squared. So we get a 1 plus x squared here and a 1 plus x squared there. I'm just going to check the, the numerator here. That's what we would get. And here we would multiply, to get this denominator, the top and bottom by x squared. x squared times that, x squared times b. And of course we want this numerator to equal 1. So what do we get? We get a plus ax squared plus bx squared. Well, there are our x squared terms, and we want that to equal 0. So we want a to be the exact opposite of b, or b to be the exact opposite of a, so that they work out as 0. And for this to be 1, a must equal 1 or if you like, b equals negative a, so b equals negative 1. Well, there we go. That makes life very, very easy. It was a quick analysis, and I hope you appreciated how simple that can be. I normally recommend my students that that's done on the right-hand side of the page, and that the general flow of this takes up about two-thirds or three-quarters of the width of the page. So we know a now is worth 1, and we know b is worth negative 1, placing the negative out the front. And I separate this into two separate integrals, because I have two separate fractions. This one I'm going to write with a negative index, and this one I'm just going to leave. Like so. Why do I do that? Well, this is a simple power of x. How do we integrate it? Well, we add 1 to the index, and we divide by the same number. This one is a standard form. Generally speaking, if you see a sum or a difference of squares, sum or a difference between squares in the denominator, or the square root of the sum or difference between squares, we've got a standard form. I'm going to devote a series of videos later to, to derive all the standard forms and explain where they come from. And I do encourage you, in order to become a more competent or complete mathematician, to actually derive all those standard forms as part of your study procedure, as part of your study time. It's a very worthwhile activity. Not only do you learn them, you learn the methods used, you practice the methods used, uh, it's a very, very useful thing to do. This is a standard form, and this gives us the inverse tangent of x, plus a constant, of course. Now, now, I must be careful. In the United States, you would write arctan x. So please don't be put off by this. Um, this is just a common... Let me write that to you again. This is just a common um, 
terminology for inverse functions, uh, even in the United States, except just not for trig functions. And of course, this we would simplify. The negative sign would come up the front, and we would, that negative index would put the x on the bottom. There it is, integral number 26 completed. Relying here on a, on a standard form for an integral, which we will discuss in a separate video rather than take up time here. I hope that's proven satisfactory and that you've enjoyed the derivation. Thank you for watching.